Alright, y'all. Um, here we go again. Randall, we got over here. We got Paul over here. We got myself, Vaughn, aka Coach Vaughn. And we got a couple of topics that we want to discuss with y'all today. So, um, the 2016 debate just went, or well, the first debate of 2016, the first presidential debate of 2016, just went down two nights ago. Uh, Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. And I want to know if you all watched it first and foremost and what some of your thoughts with were. Uh, we'll start with Paul. Did you watch it and what were some of your thoughts? Uh, I watched I it. I, know, I couldn't. Nah, you, I, honestly, I, I really couldn't yeah, watch the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, judging you. <laughs> <laughs> I really couldn't watch the whole thing. So I went back and forth between Monday Night Football and that. I was just kind of flipping back and forth. Uh, just catching uh, the state of our con- the, the the fate of our country is hanging in the balance. <laughs> yeah, it's great guys watching Monday Night Football. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes it just gets too intense. I feel you. But uh, nah, I mean it was just it's so interesting. The entire mm-hmm. situation is just interesting to me and fascinating. Just how far Donald Trump has come mm-hmm. from two years ago, a year and a half mm-hmm. ago, like. People would laugh when you say Donald Trump is running mm-hmm. for president. Mm-hmm. And now, like, it's here. Mm-hmm. We're, like, three, four weeks. No, maybe a little more. A month away. And, like, he has a legitimate chance to win. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And if you look at the polls, he's right there with Hillary. You know what I mean? And so it's just a stark contrast. You have somebody who's been in politics for her whole life almost, you know, 20, 30 years. The first, possibly the first woman, first female president, and you have a guy who really knows nothing about politics. Mm-hmm. When you listen to him speak, like his policies, he doesn't know anything really about policies, nothing of substance. But so basically, you're letting the people know who you're voting for. Huh? <laughs> no, I, no, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not revealing anything. But I'm just saying the contract will start. But the reason he's there is because he represents something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was reading something about that. Like he represents an ideology. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And whether you agree, whether you think that he's the right man for the job or not, mm. there's a large portion of the country who believes that things are broken. The system mm. is broken, and mm. so. Whether you believe he's the one to fix it is an issue, is a discussion, but you know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going away. Let me pose the same yeah. question to Randall real quick. Randall, did you see it? And what were your thoughts? So, yeah, I, I saw most of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it got to a point where, you know, it, it, it was more entertainment than anything else. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that kind of mm-hmm. at that point, after I felt like I got a sense of where they were coming from. And then after I stopped watching after I felt like Lester Holt kind of lost control, yeah. Yeah. right? Because then they kind of reverted back to their um, kind of <laughs> disorganized kind of attacking like back and yeah. forth. Do you, so, do you think that it was Lester Holt's fault that it got out of control? Because I, I, I know that sometimes they're like, yo, the moderator has to take control. Right. But I was like, yo, how do you take control in that situation? Right. You have a dude who is straight up over talking Hillary and some people would say that oh well Hillary was over talking too but I'm like she kind of had to show that she could hold her own also in terms of like not getting just run over because people would then say like oh we got a, a woman president that's getting run over you know what I'm saying and, and so yeah and, and I think I think I, don't, I wouldn't say it's his fault but mm-hmm. I think as a true facilitator you have to make sure that whatever level of communication that's occurring mm-hmm. is is one that's efficient, one that is is quality mm-hmm. and not quantity, mm-hmm. right? So, so for him, I think his approach was it's going to be about the two people up there, mm-hmm. right? So nobody in the audience clap and mm-hmm. and jeer or cheer. Um, let's focus on them. But I, I think he took a little bit too far back of a stance mm-hmm. that he allowed them to dictate mm-hmm. kind of what quality was and mm-hmm. it didn't end up being that mm-hmm. way. So there were opportunities I think he could have challenged both candidates mm-hmm. um, instead of allowing them again to throw jabs mm-hmm. and, and, and haymakers at each other mm-hmm. um, that would have allowed the American people to actually hear what was going on and, and really assess who the, the better fit candidate is. But for, for me to answer your original question, man, I was trying to watch from the perspective of what I think the average voter was, mm-hmm. would, how, how mm-hmm. they would watch it, right? So it wasn't really based on 
the policy specifically. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, for us intellectual mm-hmm. folk, right, mm-hmm. we, we can kind of tweeze those things apart. But if I was an average voter who really didn't mess with politics except for during the presidential mm-hmm. election, I was watching it and, and actually initially I, I thought um, Donald Trump was doing things I that agree. was more in line with what a president should do. Right in, in terms of his demeanor, in terms of how he was uh, so challenging. Me, I, said, I thought he was speaking from the, the heart, it, it, from from how he really feels, and not right. just some of the program. Whereas Hillary right. started off very programmed in her delivery. Right, right. So, so that made me in my mind say, okay, that that, that looks a little bit different, mm-hmm. you know. And, and no matter who I'm voting for, I, I was trying to see from the eyes of, of a common. Voter, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody who doesn't really intellectualize the process, mm-hmm. and I, I think I was disappointed at certain parts, um, and, and I think in, in most parts I, I, I was mm-hmm. in that regard. But um, did, yeah. did you all get to see? I don't know if y'all saw. This just came to my mind. But did y'all get to see the um, the uh, the interview of Mark Cuban afterwards? Yeah, it's an interesting. If you get a chance, um, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, but it was an interesting interview because um, he talked about some of the way he felt like Donald Trump needs to do and how he supported Donald Trump at first, but how he switched because, and I think this came out um, in that debate also. I think the challenge that folks have with Donald Trump is that, okay, we see that you're passionate, we see that you're, you're shooting from the hip, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're not here trying to be programmed, you're not speaking your mind, but what are you actually proposing? You know what I'm saying? And it was funny, the interviewer, uh, of the person who interviewed uh, Mark Cuban, said something that um, resonated with kind of the sentiments that I had. It's like, okay, I'm, I don't knock you giving you a chance per se, but you're not giving, I don't feel, anybody anything to go off of but that's tangible. You might say that you might disagree with some of Hillary's policies, but Hillary has some policies for you to disagree with. Right. You see what I'm saying? She 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 knows what she's talking about. When certain questions were asked, you saw the scene where, and of course, you know, some of them might have just been talking points, but it, it was like, yo, okay, she knows what she needs to talk about underneath these subject matters. Whereas Donald, some it just seemed like, okay, all right, they asked this question. I'm just gonna point out everything that's wrong with it right now, but I don't have any strategies as far as how to fix the thing. You know what I'm saying? And I don't feel like he did a good job, especially when it as it pertains to when they brought up the um, the race question. But I don't even want to just get on because there's enough people talking mm-hmm. at large about uh, you know the, the 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 debate how it went down as far well, as that goes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But what what and this might be helpful to our audience. What makes it important? Is it important that people vote? Um, does it really matter if somebody doesn't feel like they're feeling either of the candidates? Should they vote? It is 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 part of voting also having the right to not vote? You know what I'm saying? Is it is it ever good to not vote? I want to get some like, like somebody might be struggling with that question um, in their mind today, and I want y'all to help answer that question for them, like like. Give them something to think about. Well, should they vote or not? And why? And we're not trying to dictate who you vote for or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? That's up to you. You got to do that for yourself. But what should, why do we think they should or should not vote? You know what I'm saying? What are some of the things that they should take into consideration? Is it important? Yeah, so I mean, it's, that's, a, that's a difficult question. I think ultimately it's something that, that you need to answer for yourself in terms of how you vote, but but I think it's no question that you should. The reason I say that is because um, it's and, and even besides you know the, the people who, who died in, in the streets who were part of the civil rights movement that led to um, you know uh, us getting our voting rights as, as women as as black people and so forth. Um, I, I think it's it's your opportunity to to actually impact structural change in your community. Right, I, I think. I think being, and we spoke about kind of the local voting from a, a local uh, perspective and making sure you're engaged all the way on up to the top, right, the executive position of the president, um, it's, it's your opportunity to have a voice in how uh, we respond to, uh, you know, unarmed black men who might find themselves in a 
Right, you told me to set the tone. That's our time, that's our time so that we don't go too long because we want to try to concise it, make the video that's concise. So it's not his fault. He knew what was going to happen last night. He was talking to him. Oh, yeah, it does always go up all around. So none of the this, that's exactly what it is. So now, 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 okay, so we kind of got a gist of what you think about that, right, Randall? Now, Paul, important or not important for them to vote? And then I have a follow-up question for the both of you all. Yeah, I think it's important. I think it's um, really your civic duty, I mean, as a citizen. Uh, no matter where you vote or which way you vote, I think you should cast a vote. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's for the two candidates, one of the two candidates, or whether it's for one of the other third-party candidates. Boom! So let's stop it right there because we already... So, so this, this was the um, a significant question that I wanted to post to them because I know some people are thinking about this right now. Mark Lamont Hill, shout out to Mark Lamont Hill. You know, we, we love his perspectives or what have you. He does bring up a point when he was talking on Power 105, uh, the Breakfast Club, that I think we can talk about um, whether or not this is a way that we should go, whether we agree with it or not or what have you. Um, what, what, do they, what do we call it again? The protest, the, the protest vote. So that's, the, that's what we've been calling it, right? The protest vote. So you do have some people who have been promoting, um, you know, what or, or asking the question whether we should have a protest vote. And when we talk about protest vote, what we're saying is instead of voting for the big two uh, parties, you do have other parties like the independent, you have the uh, Green. the Green Party, you have the Libertarian Party. Mm -hmm. um, the question comes up: Is it time to start voting for any of those parties? in order to make a point as a, and not vote for the big two? Like, what are our thoughts on that? Even, and, and, and the reason why it's called a protest vote is because there's almost no chance of these two, of these parties winning, at least at this point, right? But, but do we need to protest by voting for one of these parties to show that we're unhappy with the, the, um, the two big parties? Boom, go. Whoever wants to go first. Well, Randall likes to go first. Yeah, so I, I, I would say, um, generally speaking, you want to vote for the candidate that you feel like embodies or at the most closely embodies the ideals that you have personally, mm -hmm. right? Because we all know that your views may differ from family members, mm -hmm. friends, and so forth. Um, I, think, I think in this case, uh, there's a lot at stake. Right, I think there's a lot at stake, and and I don't think that um, either candidate not being a a good choice or a great choice is a reason to ignore the fact that so much is at stake. Um, when you think about the individual who is going to be able to progress the country um, the most out of out of those two and out of all of them, mm -hmm. that's that's where I would encourage you to make a decision out of out of those two mm -hmm. because I don't think that just because you vote for the person means that you subscribe mm -hmm. to everything that mm -hmm. they represent. Mm -hmm. I, I think by voting, you're actually causing that person in many ways to be held accountable mm -hmm. for what they've been saying on TV, mm -hmm. right? So so when, when I, whether I vote for Hillary, whether I vote for Trump, um, <laughs> no, um, Come on, man. Don't, don't sway the people. You know, <laughs> no, I'm just messing. Either way I go, either way I go, um, I'm going to hold that person accountable for what I believe should be uh, emphasized um, and, and, and at the top of the agenda uh, for what, you know whatever the administration um, is going to enact after that. Paul, your turn. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, what was the original question? The protest vote? <laughs> because, uh, no, I mean, it's interesting, man. Uh -huh. Because there is the idea that, um, the thing is that if everybody believes that you know, the third party will win, mm -hmm. then they'll never vote for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't ever vote for the third party people, even if they represent their ideology, because they know that they won't win. Mm -hmm. But if that's always the ideology, then they'll never win. So like there's never going to be a difference. So, but I don't know. I I I'm not gonna tell you what to do or not to do. But uh, the other side of it is that. So where do you stand on that thing? So you think that they should? Well, I, I can't I can't tell you what. To no, do. I'm, no, I'm not not that you're telling them what to do. But you just feel that they should, if they don't like the big two, 
vote for potentially another candidate that. Well, they, yeah, I mean, they, I don't think they, you should they, be afraid to do that. Oh, true, yeah. I, don't I, think, would, I, don't I certainly think wouldn't want anybody to be afraid. Not afraid, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think you should not do that if you think that's really the way that it should go. Because if more people start to do that, mm-hmm. then potentially mm-hmm. things will change. Okay. But, you know, like Randall did say, this is a kind of a unique <laughs> election uh, just because of the two main party candidates. And the reality is that it almost feels like it's two candidates that nobody wants, mm-hmm. but the reality is that they are not equal. Mm-hmm. They're not the same level of evil, if you want to use that word. I mean, I'll, not to use that one, word, but... One is a lesser of two evils. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah, we potentially. Don't want to be. Yeah, potentially. So, but, yeah. I, I, my position on this is, I understand the... Uh, I understand that certain ideologies, let's say, behind wanting to vote for the person over here who isn't one of the big two, right? And by all means, there might be one of them that that are more, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, fitting for what we would like to see as a president. Mm-hmm. The challenge that I have is that we also have to live in a practical world, right? Practically speaking, those other parties probably have zero chance of winning. Yeah. On, and that's um, as unfortunate as that is to say, that seems to just be the reality. Mm-hmm. And we have to make decisions that are going to be in the best interest of the country, both short term and long term. So while our long term game is that we want to see more people have real opportunity, I think our short-term game is also like, yo, what we also have to do is best for the right hand right now, right? So I think that we do have to vote based on the, and trust me, it hurts me to say this, y'all. It hurts me to say this, that we have to vote for one of the big two. And I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm just saying, in my own opinion, we should vote for those two. By all means, we're having this conversation so that you can make your own decision. I'm just, I just think we have to vote for the big two one of the big two why because one of them is going to be president right unless god comes down and is like yo listen i'm gonna just mix it stuff up one of those two is going to be president so we have to say listen let's vote for the one that we feel is going to be the most responsible president that we could vote for right but at the same time not to leave out the long-term game i think we really do need to sit down and think about what policies need to change to give other parties a fair chance. So one of the people that we see advocating for this are the, you know, the Young Turks, and not that we agree with everything that the Young Turks say, but I do agree that they want to make politics something that gives equal opportunity to all relevant candidates, you know what I'm saying? We don't have that now. There's so much money inside of right. um, voting and, and, and advertising and campaigning that it makes it it's almost cro- crooked mm-hmm. what goes on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, but but you heard it like you heard three different perspectives on that, y'all, just now, um, as far as what you should do. But I think that we all agree that even if you just, I'm gonna say, even if you decide not to vote, I think it should be something that you have thought through and decide not to do it, and not just because it's a lazy kind of thing or it's just a oh, it doesn't matter which way my vote goes either way. I think whatever decision it is that you make, it should be something that you said, you know what, I've thought about this and I'm consciously making the decision to do this because this is what I really truly believe at heart is the best way and the best route to go about it. You know? Well, does it, you don't have to agree with me, you don't have to agree with um, I think you should vote though. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think you should vote. Know. I'm just saying that I think if you decide not to vote, it should be because you thought it through for yourself, right. not because I swayed you one way or another. I, I, the only swaying I want you to do is to think about whatever action it is that you're going to take mm-hmm. and what route it is that you, you, you plan on going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, that wraps up. Oh, real quick, you know, just to talk about, we just want to mention it. We're not going to go into discussion about it, but I think there was a great thing to see Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich. Y'all were one, you were the one that brought it up. I didn't even know that um, Greg Popovich had done that. And then I looked up and saw that Steve Kerr did it also, but how they kind of have stood with, um, you know, the, the black community to say, listen, like, 
there's nothing wrong with Colin Kaepernick protesting in the way that he has. Mm -hmm. There are some things that need to be answered. There are some some um, things that are going on in our communities that need to be addressed. And I think it's important that they did it because these are people, you know, when you talk about coaches of, of professional sports, especially when you talk about football and basketball, these, these are sports that are largely African-American. You know what I'm saying? These are men that have to deal with the African-American population day in and day out. Um, and so I think that they, they from where their perspective, also shout out to Andy Stanley, the pastor, Andy Stanley, who, who he's a white pastor, but took the time, you know, to, to bring black um, people onto his stage and, and have a conversation with them about what's going on and try to bring communities together and start addressing that he's admitted that there needs to be some there's, there's something needs to be done about what's going on so uh, I just want to, to give a shout out to them for creating a platform for the discussion to keep on going and for the healing to keep on um, taking place between our, our communities man so uh, with that said uh, any final thoughts y'all want to share Strong, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So we'll leave you with that. I'll leave you with the thought that Andy Stanley said as we as we um, get ready to wrap this up. But um, one of the things that Andy Stanley said, he's like, yo, the the dope thing um, about Jesus or uh, what was going around around Jesus' time is that you know one of the challenges that were going on was racial tension at that time. You're talking about Jews didn't want to hang out with Samaritans. Um, Jews didn't want to hang out with Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? Um, rich didn't want to hang with poor. Uh, sick, sick and, and sick didn't want to, I mean, the, the, those who were healthy didn't want to hang with those who were sick. And so you had a whole lot of different um, uh, racial and, and, and cultural tensions going on at that time. And yet you had this one instance where Jesus came and what he did was like, yo, listen, like cut all that nonsense out. You know what I'm saying? Cut all that nonsense out. And, and learn to love your brother. And the only way to do that, to learn to love your brother, that's why I appreciate what Andy Stanley is doing, is by actually coming together and even being willing to walk in your brother's shoes for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Understand the experiences of your black brother. Understand the experiences of your white brother because um, bl black lives definitely matter, you know what I'm saying? We, we believe that. But at the same time, we don't say, we, when we say black lives matter, we're not saying that white lives don't matter. You know what I'm saying? We understand. The reason why we want black lives to matter, or we want y'all to know that black lives matter, is because we already know that white lives, that white people go through challenges and stuff also. You know what I'm saying? And white people go through pain or what have you, even though it, even if it might be different than ours. You know what I'm saying? But there just seems to be a systemic and um, an overarching uh, aggression towards black lives at this point in our, our nation and our world's history. And so we want to make sure that we address that. So. The only way that, way that I see us really getting over this is if we continue to have love for each other. And those of us who understand what real love is, we continue to reach out to different communities. We continue to act in love. We continue to operate in love. And watch this for our black brethren to make sure that even though, you know, the oppressor is being aggressive towards you, that you still operate out of a spirit of love. Because as soon as you stop operating out of that spirit, as soon as you start hating the person because they're oppressing you, then it, it you be you almost put yourself in the same position as the oppressor. And the scary thing is that if things should happen to turn around, what would possibly end up happening is that you would start treating the oppressor the way the oppressor has begun to treat you, right? And that clearly isn't the solution. So. I didn't mean to be that long. Um, I, I tend to talk a lot. I apologize. You know what I'm saying? But um, but um, that's it for today, man. Uh, we got Randall File here. We got Paul Besant here. And we got me, Vaughn Edme here. We hope that this is valuable for you. If you got some things that you want to talk about, um, anything that you want us to discuss, anything that you want questions on, it doesn't have to be politics. We just are on politics right now because that's kind of like what's heavy in the community. But we'll talk about relationships with you. We'll talk about academics with you. Uh, we'll talk about um, business with you or what have you. We can discuss those things if you want some answers, right? So, that being said, y'all see the shirt, Average is Failure. Success is internal. That's a shameless plug, my bad. Shameless <laughs> plug. Um, character is legendary, man. It's all about our character, man. We want to build that up. So, peace out, y'all. Young Black America, another episode. Peace. <laughs> I'm always late with it, man. <laughs>